No. Um, speaking of hurricanes, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about geoengineering. Let's talk about it. Actually, I couldn't answer any question you need. So, all right, cool. Well, there's a documentary that all of us need to watch. I'm about almost halfway through. What's it on? It's called geoengineeringwatch.org. And we'll put a link in the description. But this guy who has he's been doing research for golly, probably 20 years mm-hmm. of geoengineering. And this documentary is insane and it makes you so mad. What is what what is it about? Chemtrails. Okay. Okay. Got All it. about chemtrails. Wonderful. Every single person that he interviewed for this documentary worked for the military, worked for the Pentagon, worked for the Bush administration, and they're like, "Yes, this is in fact what we're doing." And it's the the their whole claim is for climate control and global warming, but basically these planes are outfitted with these sprayers to where it goes back to the glitter conspiracy. They're literally spraying aluminum particles in the air. Oh yeah. my gosh. To reflect the UV sun rays back into the atmosphere to where it doesn't heat up our oceans and stuff. But is it heating up the atmosphere? That's and- what I'm getting at. Not mad at you. I'm mad at this. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that what no. you thought first? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, no. Wait, that, what did I say? That's my argument because it's. they said yeah, it's exactly. so untested, yeah. but they're just like, yeah, let's start doing this. Dude, they've been doing it. So it's cooling off our earth, but it's reflecting that heat directly above. But also, right in our ozone layer. Is it trapping the heat underneath it too? Yeah. And is that why we're having the ice melt, the oceans hitting record temperatures? Makes you wonder why we even started messing with this stuff because it's like maybe if we didn't, maybe we wouldn't be this far. Do they know how insulation works? Apparently not. But apparently they've been doing this since the 50s, testing on it. And this is a, a screenshot I got from his documentary. This was an article from Popular Science Magazine, 1958. Mm-hmm. And some of the headlines say, Control the Earth's weather and temperature is within the realm of practicability now. Electronic bombardment of the ion sphere to alter the electric charge. Air Force scientists are already experimenting with sodium vapor uh, ejected from jet planes to intercept solar radiation. All these methods would be would regulate the distribution of heat in different parts of the Earth's atmosphere. This is the basis of global weather control. 1958. 1958. <coughs> yeah, so don't say you're not doing it. Ugh. And I also saved this one part. This was, oh man, I don't know the year. But the president of Iran went to the United Nations, mm-hmm. and he was claiming that Europe was actively causing Iran to have a drought by doing this cloud seeding or the uh, the chemtrail stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So like went in front of all the UN and was blaming Europe for causing Iran's drought. And what did they say? Uh, I don't know. Golly, dude. Um, they said, "I know you are, but what am I?" It's just. Big kids picking on little kids. That's all it is. It runs a pretty big kid these days. Thanks to our tax dollars. Here's a quote for you. This is wild. This is from Lyndon B. Johnson. Um, there's He was like speaking at like a graduation or something and talking mm-hmm. about weather control. Yeah. And he As said. At a graduation. A quote from him said, he who controls the weather controls the world. Cool. And like. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because we, when a hurricane hits Florida, I mean, we're pretty debilitated over here. Preoccupied. Yeah. With distracted. everything. Yeah. You want to talk about evil scientists? Tell me. About I don't it. want to call this guy evil because I don't really know him too much. <laughs> but his ideology is kind po- of messed possibly up. evil scientist. Who knows? Maybe yeah. evil. He's a geoengineer. His name is David Keith. Okay. He's on the documentary, and he's talking about how we need to be doing this these chemtrails and stuff to stop global warming and all that. And he was on this panel and he said, if I made the decision or if there's a collective decision among amongst us geoengineers uh, to output this stuff into the atmosphere, I would personally choose to put out 1 million tons a year of this chemical in on the earth. Yeah. And he said, uh, but you might end up killing tens of thousands of people a year as a direct result of that decision. Yeah, right. Exactly. 
Just let nature run its course, bro. Okay, yeah. Just let it, just don't do that. And here's <laughs> another crazy thing. He said this technology is so cheap that he said, quote, costs are so cheap that the richest people on the planet could perhaps afford to buy an ice age. So that's where they think the next thing's going. That's the next stage. I don't know. Stones it's so and cheap like glitter. Sorry, go ahead. Sticks and stones, dude. Einstein all over again. Mm-mm. That's where we're headed. <laughs> but he also says that this chemical, what it does is it causes rapid aging, breaks down body tissue, and a hundred percent causes cancer. Yeah, obviously. And we're just spraying it every day. And it can't be just for climate troll control, though. It can't be. Well, it's also probably furthering this whole agenda of... Reduced population? Exactly. Yeah. But also, for the purpose of what Lyndon B. Johnson said, of those who control the weather control the world. So are some of these chemtrails, all these natural disasters, hurricanes, all this stuff... Or is this a warfare that we're not aware of? Mm. I don't know. What if they're spraying that stuff in space because they know space aliens can't get through it? Oh, we don't like it's the aluminum. Shield. <laughs> it scares us. It makes us itchy. How do we wrap the? How do we save Earth? Let's wrap it in aluminum foil. <laughs> Isn't that crazy though? It's it's so. Dude, it's literally the tin foil hat. Yeah, <gasps> I mean, like how you can't help it. I mean, sorry. You can't blame us for wearing tinfoil hats when you're literally put one on the earth. This one wow. guy who was involved, this older man on the documentary, he was involved in an operation of something that was parallel to the chemtrails. Uh-huh. And he said that it is so secretive that they will not allow third party scientists, other researchers to come in and see like, hey, is this actually hurting the earth more? Is it hurting people? Because it's so secretive that they're not willing to bring in other people. They're trying to keep it in like such close control. Yeah. That's not okay. No. Please don't do that. You know something? Please stop. I forbid it. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Hey, you guys you heard it? You, you guys heard Lily first. Guys, we have to stop now. Lily, this is all Lily, we've been waiting for. Lily forbade. Forbade? Yep. Forbaden. Yeah. Forbaden? <laughs> Forboden. Forbode? It. Chemtrails. <laughs> Forbode it. <coughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Lily, for saving our world. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. <laughs> I <Anyways>. forbid it. <laughs> okay. Enough. Spooky. Everything I talked about is about 2% of that documentary. <laughs> wow. Really? No lie. Because he shows the patents. It's the on YouTube? Mo- uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll put cool. the link in the description. I promise. Nice. I'm going to send it to Andrew right now so we don't forget. We need a notes board for each episode for stuff like that. Yeah, so not cool. Yeah, that's messed up. I don't know. It just feels so tough because it's like, especially when you're in the middle of that thing, like like we were last week, it's like, could this possibly be controlled? Is it really that crazy? But then it's like, why are they doing it then? Like, like, like there is proof of them spraying weird things out there. But why, that's why funny, is it? Though, that that's what I'm saying. Generally, like, it's like, throwing everybody throw your trash away, do this whole thing, and your carbon yeah. footprint, this, that, whatever, yet they're putting aluminum in the sky. That's non-biodegradable. Like, it just seems really... Is it microscopic? To yeah. protect the Earth from global warming. This guy, this documentary guy, he hired a lab to collect samples from these chemtrails, and they tested it under microscope yeah. and found <laughs> all the components of it matched up with the U.S. military patents for weather control wow my whole thing is like that's the proof i mean that's yeah that's what we've been saying forever sorry go ahead no they made us feel crazy for like the chemtrail contrail difference but now they're just they call it cloud seeding instead of chemtrails it's the same flipping thing yeah Yeah, ufos uaps yeah they're just changing the language for new generations so that we just like can we be we can be confused on the terminology do you know what brand do you know what got him started on this journey though is that he, he grew up in southern california and he's like, I dream of one day living up north and having a cabin and being completely self-sufficient, solar panels, living off grid. And so he finally did that and he moved to like the Tahoe area, maybe north of that. Um, 
And he had his whole solar panel array out. And he said over the years, he noticed, he started noticing the clouds, right? And his solar panels, their, their, um, input or their, um, what do you call it? Their, um, intake, intake like, yeah. dropped 60 to 80%, even when it was a sunny day. Wow. And he's so like, almost as if like they were literally blocking. Yeah. And he's like, that's not right. Yeah. And so we started doing research and that led him on this whole, he has this whole armada of people that have like come together and like, this is what they're doing. Yeah. But this documentary, dude, it's like three years old. But now, like, now you wonder if we peel back the aluminum wrapping of our planet, will we completely roast at the beach? I don't think so. See, I, th- I think they're like causing, I think, you know, the military literally cycles people through like every four years people get moved to a new base new projects like that's how the military works our government so often works in terms so nobody's actually looking out for future generations they're just trying to look good for the term that they serve in for the their time they're on trying a certain to project look good and profit just yeah profit or, or, make- or like solve the immediate problem like they're like hey we blew up a yeah. bunch of islands in the pacific testing bombs and it caused some problems. So how can we negate that problem? And instead of saying, let's do this, but what does it do to the future? They just solve the immediate problem. And then the next crew comes in and solves that problem. So like, even if it wasn't completely ill intended, I think it's just stupid mismanagement. And and that's what happens so often. Like you just see where someone wants to do a good thing. They have a plan, they have an organization, they have a, a something they want to do. But in order to do that, they have to shake a few hands, make a few promises, and down the line, it's yeah. just, it's like, what are we doing? Like, we're just, we're just running on a treadmill. We're working really hard, but we're not getting anywhere. Like, yeah. it's, he also did research with this team of animals becoming extinct, mm-hmm. and he did a graph. And but this one article they pulled from environmental scientists said accelerated modern human induced species losses semicolon entering the sixth mass extinction and so he like does this graph of like these animals all going extinct ever since we started the program oh gosh yeah animals that might be susceptible to that kind of stuff just animals he has mammals birds uh vertebrates i'm saying like those like those animals may just be like more vulnerable to those chemicals or whatever you know he lists all animals that are all of them are going extinct Jesus, come soon. Please. What are we doing? <laughs> please. It's my Stun birthday. <laughs> For one day, can we just not mess with the weather? Yeah. Speaking of weather, yeah. Um, did you know that? We got to not go anywhere. 